so welcome back. Last session, you all continued on your way northward, away from Sharn, um, finishing up your your business there in the city before we're collecting your next mission from Nigel Farius. Um, this one leading you on quite the trek, several weeks of travel through the Orion trade caravans um, to the city of Rukondral, a metropolis, a goblinoid metropolis in the nation of Dargoon. A relatively new nation, Dargoon was carved out of Syri near the end of the last war, and after the treaties and everything were signed after, it became its own nation. There's quite a bit of turmoil going on. Going on. Um, the leadership of that nation does has tried to bring it into um, more of the modern era, but there are some holdouts. Namely, one tribe known as the Margul tribe that is resisting, um, for lack of a better word, resisting um, civilization coming to Dargoon. It's insistent on continuing practices like slavery and actively fighting against the dragon marked houses that are trying to set up operations and create a foothold in Dargoon. Um, while after after almost making your way fully into Dargoon, going through the Margul Mountains, they made their displeasure known by attacking the caravan that you all were escorting. You were able to fight off this attack, but not before the dragon-marked caravan master was killed in the attack. You fought off the rest of the attackers, and they did retreat from the assault. It was clear that this was a tactical still several of them fighting when they called for it, but they did find themselves outmatched and so retreated back into the mountains, allowing them all to take in the aftermath and begin um, recuperation, healing, repairs, all of that kind of stuff. But that is where we pick up today. The ambush has literally just ended. The smoke is still clearing from it. You have dug your wagons out from the pit traps that they were in, um, taking count of your injured and yeah. So, the new caravan master does inform you all that it will be only another few days before you reach Rukon Draw. As everyone is getting their things back together and getting ready to hit the road once again, is there anything that you all want to do in those last few days that you spend on the road? What's the new caravan master's name? I have Marcus Dorian was the one who was killed. <laughs> I have it written down here as a John. Oh. J-O-N-S. Okay. Do, do we know with the caravan leader who died, um, was there any like distinguishing marks that would suggest a particular subgroup of the goblins or anything like that? Like, do we know, or is it just them all in general are trying uh, to kill him? So it is the Margul tribe of, of goblins. Um, they are situated mostly here in this pass. Um, but yes, it is specifically that, I want to call them like a breakaway organization, but they're more of a outlier, more of a um, more of a group that held to their old traditions after everything was trying to be changed by the recent leadership. And so I asked that because I was trying to figure out if, obviously they were organized, but if there was like a clear leader on the battlefield we can keep an eye out for. Probably couldn't determine that though at the point we were at, I assume. There was definitely somebody in command. They're the ones that ordered they're the one that ordered the retreat. Um, but I don't remember anybody specifically saying that they wanted to try and get a good look at him or try to remember any specific features, but you do know that um, there was somebody in charge, and if you want to get the opportunity to see him again, I will certainly allow some checks to see if you recognize him. Cool. But the ones that were, the hobgoblins that were um, differently attired than everyone else seemed similarly attired to each other. Yes. So there's some sort of kind of uniform-ish. Some com command structure, right? 
to, yeah. we, we need to find someone in charge. We could identify what the grunts were wearing versus what the... Um, and then we cut Dimitri loose initial... and have him go at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, three months of, like, frontline battle changes a person. Yeah. He goes into a... You wouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into a rage. Let me tell you about the last war that we just got done with. <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> Dimitri did not really participate in. It shows. In a meaningful way. Just, so, I, I could just picture Yuji looking at uh, K, uh, K and be like, oh, yeah, it's very, very obvious that you don't know. <laughs> so, so right now we're we're recovered, we're getting back moving, so I assume we can have yep. long rests and all that stuff. Right. Oh, we get a long I don't got anything, get, I'm good. Yep, yep, so we got a long rest? Get to oh, jeez. Nice. Y'all need a rest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bug bugbears get hit hard. Bit. I was at a I was at a third of my health. <laughs> also yeah, fireball. Fireball to the face, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was I think it was wasn't it it wasn't two of them, was it? Or I don't remember. There I think it was, was just two, one. But one of them was off the off the main battle map. Okay, okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> uh I think we had documented how many days of time we were going to have to put towards various things like learning languages and such. Oh, right. Yes, that should all be taken care of at this point. Yep. Yeah. We've done oh, that. How many more that you Oh, okay. Do. Okay, that was ahead. So, everything we already accounted for. The, sorry, the time, like we a... the time we accounted for includes right now. Yes. Right? Includes okay. These last four days, correct? Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. That's my bad. We're not getting it all, yeah, Carl. Right yeah, it's... Okay, I think we lost you. You didn't lose no. me, I just stopped talking. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. internet's coming and going a little bit. All that you see Tinge doing, swinging the sword, all <laughs> the, over and over and over <laughs> again. Big sword. <laughs> and uh, uh, between Dimitri and Drax, spend you know definitely trying to, um, probably staying at the front of what's left of the caravan, right next to John's, um, and keeping an active, wary eye out. He's taking the death of Marcus pretty hard okay who's was marcus oh that was the guy who okay marcus got it Dorian, yes. i think you will continue to ride around the caravan riding ahead watching out going to the behind at the rear of the caravan to uh make sure things are going along smoothly mm -hmm. did we dole out the three potions of superior healing that we had totally forgot about that so if we hadn't, we should. Um, do we do we want the people who like can't otherwise heal to have it? I mean, I have lay on hands, so yeah. I was th I was thinking Dimitri and Yuji can already heal people, but in case mm -hmm. we need to like heal you guys, maybe we should have them. Sounds good. There you go. Yeah. Good Tinge K also Red has Tinge. one. Tinge already has a potion of healing. This is superior healing. Yes, I I will take that though too. <laughs> so, and, and A will take one as well, yes? Yep. Yep. Okay. And that is 8d4 plus 8 healing. Jesus Christ, okay. <laughs> and then we still have the heretofore unusable spell scroll of call lightning. Damn. Yeah, I, I think Indeed. we will be probably selling that. Okay. I mean, we could technically throw the scroll at our enemies and count it as, like, you know, an unproficient strike. <laughs> Improvised <laughs> weapon. 
Paper yeah, cut. there it is. Ah. What, a, what a good use. What a good use of a third level spell scroll. <laughs> just hurl it at your enemies. <laughs> and then it just, that counts as it being used and it sizzles up and disappears. <laughs> I mean, we ought to be able to sell that and get at least a decent chunk towards somebody's armor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the things that I had still out outstanding for us. I'm doing a test roll of what 8D, 8D4 plus 8 looks like. Okay. All my Jesus. health. Like, that's yeah, really wow. it. That's, per that's pretty average, actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Above average, slightly. Why is it blue? Because it had both a, a, oh. it had both a 4 and a 1 rolled in the whole... Okay. <laughs> Gotcha. Two of them each. Yep. Okay. Which is perfectly average. Actually, this is perfect. It's two ones, two twos, two threes, and two fours. <laughs> nice. Vibe check complete. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be a perfectly average night. <laughs> Not all ones. Take it. So, have we reached the gathering stone yet? And as a reminder for everyone, the person we're looking for is a hobgoblin named Tontool. Tontool, indeed. Um, you would have reached the Gathering Stone at the end of your third day of travel. Is there anything you would like to do there? Um, that depends on what there is to do there. I mean, I know that the Gathering Stone is where bands of goblin mercenaries come to sign up with House Dinius. Um, but I'm not it, sure it if this... It was not a scheduled stop passing by it with the warrior okay. caravan. Was there anything... No, that's, I'm good. I was just wondering. Excuse me. Anytime we stop anywhere trying to get uh, information about this, the Morgul, um, maybe any word about who may be leading them um we're on the same page i was gonna say ask a lot of yeah. the locals if we know any more about possible raids and specifically like along the road and especially when we're near the gathering stone if we spot anybody who is obviously with house dinieth we would like mention to them what happened hey, heads up or any other um dragon marked individual All right. Oh, so. I actually, I did, oh, sorry. I was gonna say I had a question. Uh, so I have, uh, four. So I have for my goblin language, I have fourteen out of seventy days. Uh, so would that be like, I know twenty percent of goblins, <laughs> so I can like, get by a little bit, but not very well, kind of thing. Like I can introduce myself, ask to go to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with and insult of, everyone. Right, with fourteen of seventy, I would probably allow you to make some checks at disadvantage to see if you can communicate. Okay. Sure. Okay. Got or it. Or understand what's being told to you. Hmm. Just wanted to check. Okay. So, am I am just for just for clarity? You all want to keep your eye out while you're on the road to see if you come across any other Margul goblins specifically. Or if you come across anyone that looks like they might be from one of the dragon marked houses, anything like that? Is there anything specific? Well, no, it's if we, so I'm keeping an eye out for anyone that might be trying to follow us. And I have a terrible perception, so I'm not going to see anybody. But um, if we happen to stop or interact with any other groups, find out if anyone can provide us more information on the Margul. Okay. And then if we see any signs of anyone else who may be dragon marked, I think Kay was specifically saying Denith, and I'm more broadly anyone who's dragon marked because they may know that there's a problem, but I want to make sure that they know that there's a problem. Okay, got it. All right, so the Orion caravan going through here is one of the only presences that the dragon marked houses have. So the likelihood of you all running into anyone else is very low, but okay. we will, of course, as always, leave it up to chance. So, um, Dimitri, why don't you go ahead and roll a D100? Well, While he's doing, doing that, that. Oh. go ahead. Mine's 15. easy. Uh, 
people will start noticing as Tinge practices more, his eyes have started to reflect the color of his sword. Nice. They're starting to turn purple. Cool. He's being painted. Cleanse him. Remove the sword. Integrating Mine's... himself into the sword. Or the Mine's super around. easy, too. Can we count a long rest or no, not yet? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, with a 15, you all do not see any other signs of House Deneth or any of the other Dragonmark houses as far as any other caravans, lone wanderers, anything along those lines. All right. And as far as watching to see if you're being followed, anyone that would be actively checking for that, go ahead and roll a perception check. From what you all can tell, it does not appear that you're being actively followed. Absolutely not. Not at all. What about passively? <laughs> <laughs> passively followed. Passive well, aggressively? Country. It's hard to know who sees and who sees and then reports to who. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, after a few days on the road... You all do eventually find yourselves in the rusty bowl of Vukan Grog. Mm. Rusty bowl. Yeah, very That's elegant. An interesting man. description. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunderdome. You guys can't see that, can you? Nope. Um, nope. And one thing, it's it's probably Ooh. going to not matter. But during this time, I changed up my prepared spell, so I have rope trick prepared. And oh, wow. I would have told Johns and any of the other sort of non-combatants that um, should uh, battle break out, that they're to, I will, I will release it, and they're to climb up into it to remain safe. It doesn't matter That's now, because we've arrived in Mukhan Right. <laughs> They this is a really fun one for like. They will be here conducting their business or attending. That's how long you all have. But, mm. just a little bit of a history on this specific place. Uh, Rukon Draw was formed in the last 20 years for last war. We'll talk about this a little bit, but once more, a charismatic goblinoid leader by the name of Flesh Rock gathered together tens of thousands of goblin mercenaries that Seer had hired. Determined to create a land for his people, Farouk led them to renege on their deal and claim southwestern Syria as their own, renaming it Dargu, the land of the people, that translates to. The city, sitting on the Gaul River, is built out of rough stone. Dominating the city's skyline is Kar Mubar Ost, the Red House, a sturdy tower built entirely out of crimson tinged stone, the seat of, of Lesh Harak's power, and from which he rules over this proud goblinoid nation. So, after several weeks of travel, you all finally arrive here in the city and step off of the House Orient Caravan after the long, dusty trip. The air is dry and arid, but it is a bit of a relief after all of the time spent in and around caravans, the humid air being so packed close to animals, and packed with so many goods. So you are all let off at the edge of the Kari Batu, or the Bloody Market, which is the preeminent marketplace in the city, and where Lara told you all to expect Tantu. So this is a vast market, catering to just about everything that you could imagine. Uh, goods from all over, all over Corvair can be found here. And the population is vastly goblinoid. You may see a person here or there, but 99% of the people that you see here are of various goblin races. You mean a human? You may see a human here and there? What I, I say, yes. <laughs> person. You said person, and I was like, Sorry, no, they're all... human. Yes, a human. <laughs> Before we actually depart the caravan, um, I tie my pouch inside my pants. Din just broke. He's unconcerned. <laughs> nice. Red, yeah, Red goes everywhere with 300 pounds of shit on her back. If someone wants to steal it, they can try. They can try. <laughs> nice. 
Um, so we don't have a specific place other than in this market. And the market to... covers about a full acre. Yeah. Um, so should we display our Clifftop Guild stuff, or should we be not we're making that known? We're We don't. Right. Uh, it's not I necessary. I mean, we I'm just. I'm a rock. I'm weird already. Eyes on your way into the city. Some of them oh. less than appreciative of, um, of a marked house's presence. Does anyone does anyone want to look like a hobgoblin? I can do that. No. I'm no, good. I'm going to look like me. Um, okay. I assume that there are um, food and drink vendors okay. around the market area. I, I was say gonna... we kind of roam as a group, pick up some um, things to snack upon and drink. Um, Would we draw more attention as a group, though? We kind of want to draw attention. We have a contact that's probably expecting us, if I had yes. to guess. The so... more attention, you know, so we draw attention, he sees us, and we can get about our business. What Besides... time of day is it? It is midday, currently. Do you know from the uh, marketplace, is it like Sharn where there's like a magic shop and uh, or anything like that? Like if we wanted to actually try and sell those scrolls of whatever lightning spell, would that even be possible here? Okay. So magic shops would certainly be fewer and farther between here. I'm sure they do exist. Um, that would probably require some good snooping around or asking around. So let's go ahead and get a... Let's go ahead and get an investigation check, or a... We'll do just either intelligence investigation or charisma investigation, if you mind. I would like to make a charisma investigation check. Me so too. I'm gonna, I am going to roll intimidation because I am proficient with it, and it's charisma-based. We can be good cop, bad cop, then. I was going to roll persuasion to try and ask if anyone might know what's going on. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, both yeah. And sense... We are like attracting attention, being very obvious. Dimitri will pull out the little silver um, oh, no. uh, disc in his pocket and rub some um, silver powder on his, under his eyes and eyelids, and then they oh, will glow right. ever so slightly, and that will be uh, see invisibility. Nice. Just uh, in case we have a spellcaster following us somehow. Um, Tinge is just almost painfully listening to everything going on around him. <laughs> oh, and I'm keeping my echo in check. No echo out. Okay. <laughs> echo is also not out for Tinge. I, I had a question around too. So you said a lot of us are getting like dirty looks or something, right? From the goblinoids? Um, some of them, yes. Um, remember when we were, when you were being briefed on this all on your way here, you were told that the involvement of the dragon marked houses here is not seen favorably by a lot of the goblinoids by a lot mm. of people here in Dargoon um, they aren't, but most of them don't actively oppose it like the Marvel will do but there's still a lot of them that kind of look at it as a, as foreign encroachment mm. uh, Yuji will uh, take his former hood that he used to wear all the time and kind of elbow Dimitri like do you want to wear this to like cover yourself. No. Cool. I'm down. <laughs> as as we're moving about, spending well, spending you. some money um, on small stuff, you know, right. and... snacks for later, something to eat for now, something to drink. I am go out of my way to conduct everything in Goblin using slang that I picked up during the war working with Hobgoblin mercenaries the works. Fantastic. Okay, so between the three of you and especially with Dimitri um, you are all able to begin kind of working your way deeper into the market, finding some of the more tucked away shops. Um, the farther in you go, the less you see um, other humanoids, the less you see um, anything other than the goblin ones here. And I think that after all of the asking around and doing your best to remain 
culturally proper with these goblins. Um, yeah, I think eventually you would find your way towards one of the one of the back one of the farther tucked away corners of the market, and to a place that you would most certainly be able to sell the scroll and possibly buy some others. Go ahead and check the price on what you all would get for the scroll first. It's a third level spell? Yep. Mm -hmm. What was it? Call lightning or lightning bolt? Call lightning. Call lightning. Call lightning. I'm just imagining Red trying to speak to people in Goblin and just being like, Yes, hi. I sell book and then like trying to <laughs> mimic a scroll for uh from sky and that's supposed to be like magic it's, the book just... is on the table yeah all i think of is omelet du fromage so i say to my <laughs> wife all the time who speaks french some days what does it mean cheese omelet <laughs> uh, nice. dexter's I I laboratory i love dexter's <laughs> laboratory i love language barriers and miscommunication it's such a funny trope uh <laughs> Of just saying the absolute wrong shit that you're trying to say. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. So you are able to sell that spell scroll for a hundred gold. Ooh. And cool. you have found a shop that does have some magic items for sale. Mm. Does that mean we all get uh, 20 of it, right? Yes. Okay. Everybody go ahead and take your 20. And I am. Removing that from inventory. Woo, I have 600 gold now. Kind of stacks you getting, Kay? Um, get my cobbler and delicacies. Meat, meat jerky. Um, I'm sure some kind of roasted nuts. Um, uh, Flask you some... of some form of whiskey. <laughs> could you get? Could you pick me up some Skittles? I'm sure they have candied something. Mm. <laughs> nice. Bugs. 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 <laughs> yeah, B and B's. Goblins Hello. have sweet tooth, so <laughs> as in the, the standard goblins, the, the hop goblins kind of look down on that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, the shop you all find yourselves at has many a spell scroll, as well as a non-zero number of magic items, but they do, they do play that a little closer to the chest. Um, a hobgoblin woman, obviously of advanced ages, obviously she's been through some things, um, judging by the way she's dressed and things here. She herself is a practitioner of the arcane arts, um, but she does have quite a few things here. What are you all looking for, she would ask? In common? She would be only, she would be exclusively speaking in common. Everyone here knows. Nice. Yeah, I would, I would translate for anybody who um, isn't um, fluent in goblin. And I would say, um, grandmother, um, um, do you happen to have any potions, those that give you, um, courage in battle, perhaps? She would respond. I eat potion of heroism. Respond that she doesn't have anything like that, but something that might be able to help you see more clearly. Something that may be able to help you something that may be able to help you find something that's been missing in the past. And is she selling she is, is she selling us drugs? She's <laughs> it's drugs. No, she has a potion of clairvoyance, you see. 
as far as oh. magic potions go. Ooh. That would be Of clairvoyance. What's the price on that? She offers it to you all for 900 gold. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Steep price. Opening price. Yeah. With the third level spell. Mm. Yeah. T Tinge's head just kind of like snaps to the side and then goes back looking. <laughs> I would thank her for her time and tell her that. I'm I'm sure that what she has is is well worth well well worth what she is asking, and perhaps in return I will be um, able to negotiate better. She nods. She looks a little bit disappointed, but she accepts the answer. Because I can't even negotiate that down to a price that I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, as I go to turn 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 around, I would um, offer her a pour from my my flask that I that I got and go. Um, it so happens that we are we are looking for a man. Um, it goes by the name Tantul. She looks at you. And when I use when I say man, I would use the actual specific term for hobgoblin. That I, it... She looks at <laughs> you and then looks over your shoulder, and then points. And I turn around and see him. <laughs> and as you turn around, a grizzled hobgoblin with sharp orange eyes and coal black hair tied back in a top knot is walking straight towards you. Um, Tange, you probably noticed this man coming from a while away. He very, he very abruptly kind of stopped in his tracks and then turned and started marching straight towards you all. See? Um, benefits of being conspicuous. Yep. <laughs> but as he approaches, he shouts, Hey! You're the group from Sharn! Cliff's Edge! Cliff's Side! Cliff jump, whatever it is. Yeah. I'm Tim jump. That's good. I was hired by Lara to give you a hand around here. Come on, I'll show you the way to the tavern. He is, of course, speaking in Goblin. Mm -hmm. First round's on me. As he starts pushing. Insight checks. The yeah, go ahead. He hasn't even slowed down to look see if you're all following him. He just starts pushing through the crowd. Dimitri will follow. Excellent. Yeah, Tinge. I would... <laughs> Un uh, unknown. <laughs> I would reassure, re reassure Tinge that with the fact that our, um, the old lady at the shop um, identified him as well, that while we may not be able to trust him, he is undoubtedly the town tool we're looking for. Um, Dimitri will have, like, sort of scampered right up behind him, and, um, we'll be asking, so, hi, I'm Dimitri. What do you know about Margul? Margul. He pushes his way past a hobgoblin couple and hops over a tiny goblin that's running right, right in front of him as he leads you through, and says, Margul, slavers. Not much we can do about them. Their practices have been outlawed, but Wish doesn't want to start a war with another tribe just as we're getting situated. I heard you all had some trouble with them on the road. He kind of gives you a look. Sorry for your loss. Thank you. Now, unfortunately for them, we're looking to start some trouble. Well, if you run across any more goals, it certainly won't be hard to find or start, for that matter. They're here in the city. I'm sure you'll see one or two of them. If you do, if you do start anything, just make sure you're not the ones to start it. You understand? Wait. Don't no. start <laughs> fights here. 
Mm -hmm. Finish okay. fights. Don't start. <laughs> Who? Mm -hmm. We we were attacked by an organized group, but didn't see who was leading them. Who who leads them? He kind of looks over towards you. His name's Odok. Odok Bosch. He has his eyes on the throne here. He turns towards the giant red tower that dominates the center of this whole city. Odok Bosch? Odok Bosch. Bosch. Like the power tool Bosch? Or B A U? <laughs> Bash, if that helps. Bosch, that's how I pronounced it. Odok Bash! <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put two A's the way I spell it because that'll make me say Bosch instead of Bash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna talk about how I spell any of these things. <laughs> um, if if he wants to rule, uh, no, that'd be Bo. Be the French. Uh, Bo. If he wants to rule, then he has to have somewhere public here so Tantul would people shake his know head of? and say that he's been him and his kind him he has been driven out of raccoon draw while some of his people still wander through the area and are still here um his quote unquote seat of power has been moved into the mountains Do we know where, generally? Um, gentlemen, we are not here to solve the Margul problem. If the Margul's get in our way, we should deal with them. But we actually have a mission. Tantul would kind of look over towards you as you're saying that. He would kind of nod and say, Noble venture to be sure, but the marble number in the thousands. And if Bosch I'm... was to be slain, he would simply be replaced. Doesn't mean we can't help thin the herd a little bit. So exactly. usually you'd be less than impressed with thousands, but I yeah. have to agree with Kay here. We are here not to fight a civil war. Let's just focus on the mission and get out of here. We Does weren't there to fight a civil war in the cogs either. You're right. We're here to fight a proxy war now, boys. <laughs> that was a much. <laughs> that was yeah, not a. That was wasn't a war, but sure enough. That was a disagreement between employer and employees. Not. It's so much more the than that. Nations. <laughs> it is. Uh, Question about this guy, uh, Bosch. Does he speak common? Um, are you are you talking about Tantul, your guide? Uh, yeah, the guy who we've been talking to. Tantul. Um, if you were to speak to him in common, he would look towards you and he would um, speak common back to you. Um, he obviously okay. finds it distasteful though. Okay, okay. That's how he was able to re respond to K speaking common to us. Okay. Yeah, I was just talking. Have yeah. we heard any languages other than Goblin? Goblinoid? If you were to focus and listen in, you might hear um, common slip in every now and then, but for the most part, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other other than to other people in our group, Hay is only speaking Goblin. Right, right. Mm. So. You choose to hold out. You don't speak common. Doesn't have any interest. Just letting everyone babble. Oh, you mean you don't speak goblin, right? Yeah, goblin. No, I'm sorry. What did I say? Common? Yeah. No, he's, like, just, no. <laughs> he's just not speaking. He, he, goblin is common. <laughs> you just, common yeah, is you, common. you just not speaking. <laughs> uh, Alright. So Tantua leads you all to a nearby tavern. The Staggered Tribex. Shows you all inside. And a very large and tough-looking bugbear stands at the door, 
<laughs> and gives you all a nod as you enter the dark pavilion. Um, there is a higher concentration of non goblin like inside this tavern than anywhere else you see in the city. Excellent. They, what was the name of this place again? Something Tribex? Tribex. Staggered. Okay. He said it's a bugbear at the door, right? Yes. And that's bugbear not to say that there is no goblins here. There are many goblins here. This just seems right, to be right. a place that is friendly to outsiders. And probably why not to decide to bring you here. So, Tatul sits at one of the tables and gestures you all to join him. It is a large table, one of those big, long, uh, one of those big, long, uh, beast hall style ones. And gestures you all to sit. Leans back, and before he's even fully situated, a goblin barmaid approaches and pours him a drink and looks around and says, "She doesn't even she doesn't even speak. She holds up a hand for to she holds up a hand with five fingers on it for five glasses. It's a bit of a questioning look on her face." I give her a nod. Um, I make a point. What what to to talk to the bugbear bouncer? Okay. Hello. Uh. What's your name? You guys, with the names, you're gonna kill me here. Um, the <laughs> bugbear bouncer's name is. I literally oh, just wait. had this open and then closed it. I'm like, I'm not gonna need them. You're gonna. Oh, need there's an actual in a goblin. You're city. gonna need names. I'm just I'm surprised. <laughs> everybody. So I'm surprised you actually have answers. His name is. Call him Duck. 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 D U K. D U K. There we nice. go. Duck. So what do you have to nice say? Nice to meet you. I will just leave, nice. this, leave this generator open from now on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a generator. I thought you had them written down. Yeah, I was oh, like, he wow. Has a, he has a fantasy name generator open. <laughs> it's it's very nice to meet you, Duck. Um, that's it for now. <laughs> that's why I laughed uh, earlier oh, so when, when, when you asked about a name. I just laughed. <laughs> uh... Red's going to get a napkin and draw a picture of a duck on it for duck. Uh, <laughs> How long has it been he since? To oh, for it's not. It's not good either. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. I don't show it to him. I just <laughs> <laughs> throw it away. No, no, no. I would be like, I would draw it, and then I would just not. Like if he can try stealing it from me, then okay. No, no, no. If you don't, if you don't even present it to him, then no, it's fine. No, 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 no. Yeah, I would see how bad it is and then not <laughs> give it to him. <laughs> how long did it take us to get been here? In Rukondral for about two hours at this point, putting it at late mid, at late afternoon. Okay. When we get back to the place, I will sort of grab on to the pearl of power. And it will hum ever so slightly, and then I'm going to recast uh, the invisibility. Okay. Nice. Um, I would look at um, Tentool and say, in Goblin, um, is this private enough for our conversations? He nods. Respond that the people he trusts the people here. Do you know what our goal is, so he or just says that you are to help us? That here is what Lara told him. He says Lara, using her first name, he's clearly acquainted with her. Says Lara, looking for the chains of Murtal. Our stories tell us that he, Murtal, that is, was a mighty warrior of old. Galdar, Great Moot, and Ash. Now, your client, Provost, uh, Furious? Nefarious? Whatever his name is. Close no. enough. He believes that the chains are imbued with the essence of Galanus. Very court. Now, if it falls to you to find Myrtal's remains and retrieve the artifact, then so be it. Many have tried, many have failed, but that is the point of them, isn't it? For someone to find them. As agreed, I will lead you to the Vale, or as Lara called it, the Valley of the Hero. Uh, anyone familiar with goblin history would know that his people call it the Vale. From there, you must find your way to the chains on your own. I will not be accompanying you deeper into the valley. Any questions? How long will it take us to get there? A matter of days, depending on the road and the weather. 
how many bad guys can we expect? I would certainly hope. In common. You um, say many have tried and many have failed. Not. By failed, do you mean that their bones litter the veil? He smiles. How safe is the journey there? He says that the journey there is relatively safe through the countryside, fully controlled by the new Dar Dargoon government. I assume you have the necessary bribes or tokens or papers to allow us to go there without harassment from the local authorities? says that his presence will be enough to keep anybody off your back that may have unpleasant questions for you. Do you have a map of the uh, of the area? He does. And he produces that for you and says that Lara sent it to him not long ago. This, he holds it up, is why he's helping you. He says that a map leading directly to the Vale of Heroes the veil is invaluable to his people. It was a part of the deal that he allowed you all to go there first before he could bring it back and well I assume there are system. other things that the people would like to recover from there. He nods and he says that you are likely to encounter other seekers as you move through the valley. He says that they are honor bound and if they are indeed seeking the chains of Myrtle, then you should have nothing to fear from them unless they have something to fear from you. Once we have claimed the chains, what can we expect on our journey from Dargoon? He tells you that the story of the chains and what may happen once they are retrieved, as they have been before in the past. It's better told on the trail, around the fire. A story that you would rather not tell in the middle of the fog. Uh, Tinge, while this is going on, is looking around for anything, including invisible people. So, Go ahead and get <clears throat> perception checks from both Tinge and Dimitri. Okay. And the reason I was asking about the map is I want to see the sort of well drawn or whatever path that this quote unquote safe path that, that he may be indicating that we should be going and then see if there's a more direct route that is through potentially dangerous territory because in his current mood will we run into Margul if we go this way instead? <laughs> okay. So his map basically leads you all basically leads you all straight to the Seawall Mountains. Straight basically a straight shot west from here, just north of Valar Dwal. Um says that if it's the marble that you're looking for, then the mountains is where you'll find them. Where you're going, he says that, uh, well, there's not many places closer to where they operate. All right. Uh, when I was asking him what we should expect once we claim the chains, what I was specifically asking about and I would be more specific in this case is do we need to fear the local authorities and rulers of this land when we try to leave he says absolutely not if Mortal sees it fit for you to have the chains then you will have them if he does not then you will not that is all anyone ever needs to know fair enough So I'm kind of feeling like the English in Egypt right now. <laughs> <laughs> he 
When do we leave? Says he can take you all out as soon as the morning. Does this tavern have rooms, or do we need to find some uh, some other place that is safe? He recommends heading back to your caravan. He says there's not going to be many places safer than that in the city for a bunch of outsiders. Right? Fair enough. Who who would we have to be concerned about if we stayed in the city? He says no one in particular. But there are people in the city that certainly don't like the presence of uh, Orion, Denith, any of the Dragonmark houses here. I can understand that. I can respect that, and I don't want my presence here to be an offense to anyone. But if you, if you tell me now that the biggest fear that we should have for staying in the city is that some other operative of this spineless individual who killed someone for doing nothing more than their duty, their job, then I will uh, find a cot and stay here tonight in this open room. You see a smile start to spread across his face. Um, were you Were you speaking goblin, by the way? Yes, okay, absolutely. Fantastic. In my very hawk, hawk goblin, properly, <laughs> properly punctuated. Fantastic. No, I tried to teach him slang. He just wouldn't catch on to it. <laughs> no, no so abbreviations. Montero no. Is impressed, and he gives a he gives a dar salutation, almost basically congratulating you on your bravery and acknowledging. But he's definitely impressed. And he says that the Tribex doesn't have doesn't have beds, and the owner might be a little confused if you just start posting up on the market taverns. But he doesn't he does admire your admire your, your courage. Okay. If you feel it's the best for the cavern, then we'll go to the cavern. Caravan. I mean, caravan. <laughs> the cavern, caravan, same thing. It's a new language. Matri yep. starts digging a hole. <laughs> oh, I guess we're making our way back to the caravan. Alright. Tantul rises to escort you all back towards the caravan. Oh, good. Will you stay with us there? He says he'll take you back to the caravan, then he'll return in the morning to collect you all for your journey out of the city. Will you be in danger for your interaction with us tonight? He says no. The, the, those that would do you harm are, as you put it, cowards. They would not strike out at him, and they would not strike out at you unless they felt that they had some sort of overwhelming advantage which they're completely hit for the city. He says to remember that the Margul are outsiders here as well. They are not welcome, and their customs are looked down upon here. Um, yeah, he says he says that they very much do not hold any position of power in this city. Yeah. Hillbilly is in New York. <clears throat> okay. Dimitri is struggling to take him at his word, given the most recent circumstances. Which is weird for him. Yuji can't understand shit, so he's just kind of nodding his head. <laughs> no one's translated anything for Yuji. He's just, <laughs> oh god, just talking all angry. <laughs> he's just sipping his sake in the goblin sake in the corner. Okay. All right. So, Tantu leaves you out of the Stagger Tribex and through the bloody market on your way back towards your caravan. Um, as he does so, it's still it's still early evening at this point now after your visit to the, after your visit to the tavern. And vendors are still calling out raucously, trying to catch people's attention. The smell of dust and unwashed bodies still fills the air. Uh, there's temporary stalls dominating a wide square as you pass through. 
though a ring of permanent shops surround this area. And as you enter this section of the market, you see an old abandoned storefront, uh, upon which you can faintly make out pictures of humanoids and chains. Tantul would gesture towards those and say, Old memories. Bad memories of this place. He says that the new king, the new leader, I forget exactly what they were called. It's, the, it's not king. But, um, he says that it was one of the first things he did when he took power, was to abolish the slave trade in the area. Um, while there are still some that fight against it, it has been officially outlawed here. I, I respect that that was the first decision he made, and understand why they would feel the need to leave signs. People who choose to bury their past are prone to repeat it, reminding people of the horrors that they lived through and how uh, letting them see where they are now hopefully will keep the, the people on the right side from remaking those bad decisions. So as you all move through the market, uh, let's go ahead and get some perception checks. So as you're all making your way through, as you make these checks, one of the things that you notice is an aging goblin man sitting on top of a crate. He's got an empty sack open in front of him, a handful of coins with his own inside. Fantastic. UG. Woohoo! The goblin Twins. out in his native tongue. This Glory be to the mockery, patron of our mighty warriors. May he ensure that our blows land against the twisted Chatur, or that he may flay our skin himself. Honor the shadow who gave us the ability to peer through the black of night as to dominate our lands. Pay tribute to the Keeper, so that he takes the humans and elves in the dead of night. And he kind of looks over towards you when he says that, and leaves us untouched and ready to reclaim our birthright. Never mind him. Ravings of a madman. Tales of creatures descending from the heavens to take all non-goblin folk. A priest of the Dark Six. Oh, is that what that was? Never really studied religion much. I find comfort in knowing that it's there for people, but not necessarily in the details of it. The goblin continues to rant and rave in that manner. I fight back the urge to send a echoing nightmare pleading over him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great now, minds think alike. UG and <laughs> Dimitri, you both hear what sounds like loud dispute two hobgoblins appear to be arguing loudly nearby it seems to be over the price of a red okay yeah that's it do you do you respond in any way do you... i think uh yuji would stop and kind of tap dimitri and kind of like you know point because what are they saying they're Haggling over bread, I, I think. So the customer is claiming that he's being overcharged while the vendor is defending his prices. As you're watching, you all can see emotions begin to heighten, and then suddenly hands fly to their weapons. Just before steel is drawn, a small goblet steps in between them. Towered over by these two hobgoblins, they can easily step on it him to but this small goblin intervenes and clad in a dark wolf pelt and mounted astride a sleek black panther he strides in among them he begins to try and negotiate between the two after a brief but heated argument the two calm down and he walks with them out of the market continuing to help them work out their differences and as you see that scene tom tool nods and says 
much as a title has anything. Um, you can see, so Tuntul, after seeing this, he kind of points it out and says that we're trying to move away from our tribal warish ways and into a more enlightened period where we're not simply striking each other down over the price of bread. That's good. Um, I think my natural inclination would have been try and go in there and buy bread for both of them, but I think growth like that has to come from within. He nods. I think it might have been offensive if I would have done something. He says that you have a keen perception, noticing that they likely would have taken offense, seen it as an insult to both of them. You may have unified them yet. Who also could have gotten robbed? Uh, Uchi would uh, question who the uh, goblin on the panther was and Ritz. what sort of authority they have. Okay. So Tuntul would tell you that there are several that have been given authority by the Lesh. And they're mediators for the most part. That what you just saw was their job. They look for arguments, they look for disputes, and try to settle them before they can come to blows. It says that you can recognize them by the wolf pelts they wear. This lesh sounds very wise. Um, I think we could benefit from something like that in Sharn. Um, I think I think some people just assume that because something's a rule that people will know how to do it right and then will punish them because they didn't rather than putting people out there to help them make the right decisions with help so at that time Tantal kind of looks a little bit surprised he says that you don't have I forget the term for them but there is a term in the Dar language for what they call them but he says he asks that you don't have the professional mediators in charm he was under the impression that he hey. was... Petrvalar, the ward bearers. Thank you. Um, no? I, I looked to the group. Um, we don't... There's no one that... Like, that that little... Uh, this, the, this is the magistrates, but they seldom leave their offices. They have us. But they judge after it's someone's it's made fine. an error, right? Not not sort of intervene at the time to prevent right. something they don't happening. try to prevent interesting idea you two would point out that uh, Karnath is still under martial law and very rarely do we get to a level of dispute where people take arms because the military will snuff that out immediately how do they do it would they do it like that, where it ended with two people maybe maybe happier with the outcome? Probably more likely that if everybody is unhappy, then <laughs> the law you two would, would nod. Martial law sometimes is quick to decisions and the benefit always seems to go back towards the crown. So I suspect this is a better method than what we would have had in Karnath. Yes, and, but I, I think that the end result is still the same, that it is to the betterment of the crown. Because maybe the next time they, they run into a similar situation, the mediator won't have to step in. Your people, um, some may call your people um, savages, but I think that you're far more civil than many I've met. So, Tentul looks over towards you and says, I know how we are perceived by many outside of here. And as he says that, he turns and in common, he says, but there are still savages among us. And as he says that, a human woman dressed in simple clothes with a despairing look on her face is dragged in front of your path. Okay, yep. Mm -hmm. She's flanked by a trio of bugbears, proudly standing tall with spiraling horns mounted on the back of their armor. You all recognize that. Ambush. He 
spiraling. Neat. Tontul frowns as they pass by. Those there are more savage slaver clans that operate on the fringes of society. He spits on the ground as they pass by. He notices and they kind of, these buggers notice and they kind of growl at him, but they don't approach him. So you don't want to deal with them. As he says that, they shove the woman down an alleyway. Mm. Tantul says that Lesh Harak has demanded his warlords follow his example and free their slaves. Unfortunately, his grip on power isn't as strong as it could be. Any plans to slaves? Um, I need her, please, to make a constitution saving throw, or she can choose to um, fail it. As I'm going to vortex, vortex. away from them. Nice. So, verbal and semantic. So as you begin casting, Tantul would lay a hand on your on you. Tantul is watching you all for something like this. It says, "Not here, not in the open." He points towards the alley they just went down. Okay. Um. Can I still see her? <laughs> I, I, I give him a look of, like, consternation, and I finish the spell. Okay. Oh, shit. So, Red, you're you're very mute. I think you're, like, microphone or something, maybe. What's that mean? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, Red, I'm uh, Sorry, go ahead. Hello? I'm, like, on top of my microphone. Uh, can you hear me? A little Just better. Just barely. a little quiet. I can, I can mess Hello? with Discord. Uh, wait, one second. You okay, sound like I do that. when I have my headset mic folded up. How about now? That's yes. Better. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I was gonna say, as an artificer, uh, Dimitri Tech kind of only needs to do the verbal, uh, the somatic, or he ha he always has a uh, an oh, item please. requirement or material component for all of his spells. <laughs> my armor. Yeah, so you can, he kind of just needs to make the verbal if that makes any difference. Okay. So, one moment. She has no idea what is happening, so she is going Absolutely. to be so, As a commoner, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So, nice. 16. D20 roll. And um, my intention is to like um, teleport her to be like right amongst our group. Um, oh, I will, that's like, a cool, joy. nice giant sign. That the, uh, mm, not like on a roof or something. <laughs> nope. She fails, and as they shove uh. her down the alley, ninety feet. Yeah, she's within range. As they shove her down the alley, she suddenly vanishes and appears in front of all of you. Tontool's eyes go wide and he crosses his arms and leans against a building nearby. And then I will um, usher her away. Uh, yeah, throw, a, throw a cloak on her. Yeah. So and basically what happened is a bugger went to shove her and then shoved thin air and then fell flat on his face as he did so. He yep. and those around him immediately start looking around, shouting Hulu, where'd she go? So, I place my echo at the entry to the alleyway as we go walking away. Uh, uh, yeah, and I'm just trying to put her... I'm not a very big person by any stretch of the imagination. I just have, you know, armor. And I will you know, whisper, you're okay, just keep walking. And... Binge lag behind the group. I will need... Oh, Yuji's gonna lag behind as well. First, from Dimitri. Mm. <gasps> I'm gonna oh, use oh, 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 oh. That is that I'm like literally could be worse. You're okay. The three bugbears immediately start <laughs> stomping over towards you all. Oh. And Sorry. They, Can, all, uh, they all stop and they're like She's with us! Aren't you Min? And she just kind of leans back towards Dimitri. Just taking her for a stroll. Y'all aren't kidnappers, are you? 
What are you mm. talking about? This is our friend. She's been with I us don't... the whole time. Uh, Yuji will step up to the one who is leading them and cast command. Oh, no. Uh, yes. Telling him to know. scram. Oh. oh. Okay. Does, so, he, does, the, does the target of command have to understand the language? You do. Ooh, sure hope so. They do. Damn. Damn. They have to understand. <laughs> Are they speaking goblin when they said oh, yeah, she's ours? Okay. Okay. I would I simply fails. say in goblin that nothing, that why would she want to go with anything as ugly and disgusting and cowardly as you in goblin? Oh, gods. <laughs> we're really, yeah, we really want to have a fight, I guess. I don't know, trying to avoid no, it. If we're going to have a fight, they need to start it. <laughs> Change is just going to repeat every bad word Kay taught him in a row. <laughs> <laughs> just like, fuck, shit, and so damn it. All we like, but we are not drawing first blood. <laughs> Change just stands there with mm. in, in between them and the group, just cussing, cursing, their lineage, their ability, oh my God. their mothers, their fathers. Uh, no. Any any possible way he can think of so, to make them. Dimitri, as this is all going on, Min is just like standing next to you and she's like looking wide-eyed between all of you like you're all insane. She's not wrong. Because we clearly are. <laughs> and Tantul is just sitting against, sitting on a nearby building with his arms oh, yeah. crossed, leaning up against it. And I'm sure. that... So, Tinge, as soon as you mention this bugbear's mother, he immediately <gasps> throws his head back, roars, and lunges at you. And we're going to go ahead and take our break now. And when we come back, of course we are. We'll there you. was no reason to do that at all. All right, everybody, so we are back. You have pulled a human woman away from the clutches of several bugbear slavers. Unfortunately, they did notice this occurrence. And we're not too happy about it, and became increasingly unhappy as you continue, as you began insulting and berating them uh, publicly. Luckily for you all, the laws of this area are very clear about mutual combat and what that might entail. And so, we are going to put you all right here. And with that, we are going to roll initiative, everybody. Min is around the corner right over here. Oh no, she's totes with me. I was trying, I, in theory, I would be a little bit like behind the Got group it. and have her right next to me. Got it. So I think Yuji would be closer to Tin because I tried to stop she's it and they just looked at me. Yeah, Tin, Tin and Yuji lagged a little bit behind the rest of the group to be a wall of pain. A wall of pain. <laughs> Red didn't want to associate, so she shamefully like. <laughs> Like, oh god, I'm with these people, I guess. Uh. <laughs> oh, right, roll in it. Uh, oh, I'm on mute. No. Um, which was the alleyway that the bugbear was taking her down? There? Okay, because I, cause I said I moved my, my echo that direction. And my echo would have, like, followed it along with them. Okay. <laughs> So he would be like here now. Awesome. Okay, we do have a couple wow. of players to act first. Oh and my goodness. Surprisingly high bonuses to their initiatives. <laughs> yeah. That it's that like surprise feature of them, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So they are going to howl. You know, let's 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 fix this one. Ooh. Yeah, their decks make sense since they're supposed to be like the the boogeyman under the bed kind of thing. Hiding in darkness and stuff. I knew that they were ambush specialists. Hmm. 
we tricked them into ambushing us. <laughs> oh shit, they have surprise. Oh god. They don't not like the surprise. They don't have surprise. Not like the condition, but their thing. I forget how it works right now. Yeah, um, they, uh, they get the massive bonuses the... if they have surprise. Oh, okay. You're thinking, you're thinking the character player, character player race. The player character mm -hmm. race. I didn't know if it updated accordingly. No, they the didn't monster. update the, the monster Ooh. itself. Off to okay. a good start, Tinge, it swings this morning star at you for a 20 to hit. Ooh. Hits. Five piercing. And that does bring us to the next one. Rushes up it also. Just, yeah, Tinge is still just berating them. His eyes are glowing <laughs> more and more purple. Misses. Fantastic. Red, you're up. Ugh, okay. Uh, so neither neither of them actually hit him, or one they did. did. One did. Which one hit? Which one hit him? The one directly in front of me. Okay, cool. Yeah, we have strict orders not to engage until they've engaged, and that guy hit first, so I'll hit him. <laughs> um, yeah. So Red over here, like partially covering her face, is like, oh, okay, I guess we're doing this. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, chill become super hairy and stuff and then jump uh oh wait hmm could how tall are these roofs the rooftops um yeah i would say that they vary in height go ahead and roll like this one. D10s and add 10 that's how high they would be jeez okay so 19 feet so we'll just call uh, it Okay. Hmm, I can't climb nothing. Uh, so... <laughs> you yeah. can just go around. No, I can't. Well, what? I mean... <laughs> There's nowhere to go this around. Guy, this, guy, this guy didn't hit, but he swung. Mm -hmm. He made a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still want to get behind them. Uh, so Red will run over here and she'll try and, like, push past him. Like, go... Contested athletics. Uh, yep. Yeah. Woo, I have advantage. This is my thing. It's Damn. 10. Oh, no. Oh, wait, do I have the higher bonus though? Does No, wait, he's the the state stays the same the of, stays the before same, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, okay, whatever. Um then shall jump through to <laughs> Jump past uh, instead. <laughs> yeah. He won't try to stop you. 16 hits. Yep. Uh no, sorry. That's 22, 24 and 16. Oh shit. Uh, um 24 and 16 the, hits. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, 22, 24, and 16, because of reckless. 22, 24, 16. They all hit. So yes. that is 30 yes. points of damage and a dead bugbear. Or, yeah. Or, you know, a bugbear, depending on your tournament. Conscious bugbear. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, and then she'll, like, look at this guy and be like, uh, You, you <laughs> just like, screamed, I don't know you! And you just repeatedly yeah, kicked him. In the nether yeah. regions. Yeah, wave sheepishly. Uh, that's all. <laughs> okay, Dimitri. Um, my entire, uh... I will look to K, and I will say, um, watch her, and then as a bonus action, uh, so one thing that people have noticed ever since Marcus died, instead of going Infiltrator, I've been going Guardian. Um, mm -hmm. as far as far as I, so uh, I will move over here next to this guy. So what does your, your Guardian then, suit look like compared to your Infiltrator suit? So um, whereas the Infiltrator suit seems to be more form-fitting and clearly um, intended to, to not make noise, as I move about, the Guardian suit um, looks more blocky. Um, I look like I actually lift weights, which is totally not true. <laughs> um, so look, look like a, he's got a body. Um, it's like the padded Batman suit. Yeah, exactly. Totally <laughs> that. Um, and then I like knock my gauntlets together and then punch this guy in the face. Uh, I'm going to use my sessional. Because I'm not going to allow it and ruin my display. Fantastic. Uh, so he will take uh, 10 thunder damage, and if he attacks anyone other than me, 
um, he will have disadvantage. And then I clock him a second time with a 24 uh, for another eight thunder damage. And that'll be the end of that, because that was bonus action to give myself 10 pit points of uh, six, 10 pit, or five, 10 pit points. Awesome. All right. Yuji. I just hope everyone appreciates my gift there of watching Dimitri just suddenly hulk out into this giant armor and everything. He's probably properly confused. War Machine versus Iron Man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just like, what the fuck? All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to run right up to the bugbear in front of me and try and hit him with Grimfrost. Cool. All right, I'm going to swing again. Cool. I'm going to Pam. There we go. Okay. Oof. I was just waiting for it to be 11. I'm like, all right, fuck this. I'm stupid. <laughs> Six bludgeoning, all right. Oh, I forgot my uh, dueling, so eight. Eight? Yeah, eight. Uh, also, doesn't that... That's also part of the Grimfrost Spear. It should do cold damage as well. Oh, yeah. Right. Hold on one second. Would it? Yeah, we're it's gonna part say, of the we're spear. The, the, the butt end of it is not going to do the cold damage. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, that's we'll, how we'll, I would rule it as a DM. Uh, however... That is a dead bug bear. The one in front of me only took eight health. No, that's. Oh, my bad. Oh, it was, I yeah. One wrong second, one. I was taking the HP off of the wrong one. Yeah, I was like, wow. Glad I got the little <laughs> weak one. So. <laughs> Super audible to fight the weakest one of the group. Yep. It's just two <laughs> goblins standing on each other's shoulders. That's fine. Nice. Eight. Okay, so that one took a total of Dimitri, Dimitri, did you forget your homunculus? No, I used my bonus action um, to give myself 10 pit points. Uh. So I don't know if anyone... Oh, no one's noticed because it hasn't gone live yet. I made an adjustment to, to uh, Dimitri's speaking speaking avatar. And instead of having two points, it's all just on one screen now. So now whenever he's speaking, the face mask goes up and whenever he's not, he's down. That's pretty awesome. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Glorious. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Okay, you're up. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I am going to start blasting. I'm not going to bother with any spells. I don't think they're necessary other than just Elder's Blast. We'll start with the most injured one down there to the south. Um, that's a 22 for 13 force. 13 does kill this one. Yeah. And then the one that... You just hit a 19 for five force. Five force, okay. And um, five feet straight back away from me. Right. I got an opportunity to attack that dude then, right? You can't. Force Sorry, movement. force movement. Hmm. Dang. Yep. Okay. Um, Look at that blood and person. the one that I just blast it backwards I will in goblin say you are too weak to reach me you fool okay that's it for me oh okay. perfect his turn <laughs> <laughs> alright yes so he looks back towards UK and does roar up into the air as he steadies himself and he's gonna run right past Yuji. Yeah, as soon as he moves five feet away from him, go. Yep. Warcaster. Oh. Nice. An eighteen for eight force and ten okay. feet straight away from me. And Yuji, as he exits your range. Come nope. on, eleven. As soon as he got well, he, five he feet wouldn't away have yet. Echo, it would be he it would still be here. Oh so where where was this all happening? So as soon as he got five feet from your echo. He would be entering Yuji's. Then he just got shoved back to the square that yeah, he was okay. in before. So he, he was right here. He got yeah. here. So, so one he got blasted and, back. And then he Two. got hit for and for eight force, and then another four force for the second beam. So twelve total damage. Okay. He does still make it to you. 
Okay. Well, he, Yuji would get his opportunity yes, to attack. and scrambling back to his feet, completely blind with rage. I rolled a wisdom save for him after that. It's only got it now. Oh. He is would he Red my have range. gotten one, too? Yeah, he did leave my range. Yeah, first. Yuji and Red, it looks like. Yep, so there we go. He did. He's gonna he make explode. it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's dead, sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's super oh. dead. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> oh my that god. Is quite the dismissal. Yeah. So, it's been a little bit... It's been, it, it hasn't been extremely noticeable until now, but there is a large group of people kind of forming a circle around this whole thing, watching them. I'm not sure. As, as yeah. Red and Yuji just completely obliterate this goblet, this, this, uh, this bugbear, you all hear a gasp of shock and awe from the crowd gathered here watching. Red really would tear him down, so he would fall on his face, uh, still <laughs> breathing a little bit. Yuji, I don't... Yeah, because he would fall right here as he leaves, as he attempts to leave, so he'd still be... And then Yuji huge. would probably, because I crit, just take a spear and remove his head in a nice, clean okay. fashion for everyone. Great. No chill. Vengeance Paladin. No chill. Yep. <laughs> Didn't okay, really leave now... here. Okay. okay. This one does get an 18 on his intelligent saving throw. He's going to look around kind of start backing up away from you all. Ah, oh, shit, would he? Hey. My echoes, my, my, my echoes, my, my reaction's already spent. My echoes, you know, but I don't know if you can tell or not. Or... Okay, yeah, he was, he's gonna run. He is going to use his full dash which means you all will have to use ranged attacks if you wish to stop him. And I'm guessing there's a crowd and... He is pushing and shoving his way through a crowd. Luckily, he is huge, so he stands up tall over most of them. So he's still got a couple clear shots, but we'll say if you can't take him down in this next round, he will get away. I... How far did he go? So I'm he let dashed. go. So... He is five feet off the map. Hmm. I'll give anybody that wants one a free act an action. We'll just go ahead and go in initiative order because that is going to be it. So, Tinge, do you try to stop him as he runs? Yeah, so Tinge goes 30 feet towards him. Echo appears 15 feet away. It moves 30 feet right up to him. And if not, I was going to be, uh, it, 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 your echo doesn't take him out. I'm actually going to be positioned five feet the other side of him. <laughs> okay. Make an attack. I clicked out of my screen, so the drama has to wait for me to reload. <laughs> <laughs> no. the macros aren't popping up either. This is great drama for radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Attack number one. Ooh. Oh, Jeez. no. Oh, no. <laughs> seems, seems normal. All right. Uh, <laughs> unleash, because why not? There, that's okay. more. Whew. Second attack. You're, oh you're my god! Oh, jeez. It's actually up beside him, right? Yeah, it's it's adjacent to him, not directly behind him. Um, yeah, I want him done. Axe and surge. Okay. Oh, 
I was gonna say, we're not having a recreation of Yuji's death saves. <laughs> Alright, so we're up to 20. Okay. Unleash. Alright, down he goes. It's just so many attacks, oh my god. And I'm gonna keep going. The Do sword's it. gonna just <laughs> pop out again. Uh. And then the echo disappears. All right, everyone. Dimitri will definitely go over to Min. Okay. Are you okay? She nods. She's a little bit shook obviously um but yeah she would nod and thank you all and as she is pouring out her gratitude tonto would reapproach and the market would basically go back to business as usual people are kind of just walking and stepping over the bugbear bodies that litter the floor i think you she would go around and kind of collect and drag the bugbears back down their alley and leave them there tell you all that she was traveling along the trade road about a week ago when this group attacked her and her party on the western side of the Monty Mountain, on the western side of the Sea Mountains, uh, venturing out beyond the Dargoon to find captives. So in Breland or Zilargo? As you're all, as you as Min gives you the breakdown on what happened and how she went right here, um, Tantul will arrive and say that there is a Denith compound near where the caravan set up. Min will be safe there. And recommends that she head there to try and contact anybody that would be able to help her return. Yep. It okay. was that, or ask if she had any skills that the caravan master might be able to make use of so <laughs> she was recently a caravan runner before she was captured so that is certainly an option for her uh your choice you'll stay with us until we get back to the caravan and then you can make the decision what you need to do from there um and Dimitri will go to Tantul and like look very you know, lift the, the, the head of his um, uh, helmet and look very sort of crestfallen. I'm sorry. I know that that wasn't what you wanted us to do, but I just couldn't let that walk by in front of us. He looks around. He says, no, you all handled it quite well. You goaded them into attacking you first, and that's all that we needed. I just wanted to try and keep you all out of trouble if you managed to do that on your own. And as he says that, the same goblin that you all said, that you all saw earlier, rides up to you on his black panther. Just he's like, what? Never mind, sorry. What? I was gonna say, he's riding up like, I... oh, never mind. <laughs> no, he's riding up. You, you have some time to react if you wanted to. Oh, no, that's uh, just gonna stand there and wait for him. Okay. He rides up and looks around, and he looks at the horns on their back. It's Margul. He looks up towards you. I'm going to assume they attacked you. They did. You do would uh, step up and one. say, uh, we're just simply taking out the trash. There's nothing to see here and try and persuade him away. Tinge would jut out his jaw and just lean over and show the scuffs on his shoulder and be like, to a point. Trash indeed. Uh, Yuji, you said taking out the trash. That was you that said that, right? Yeah. Okay. Trying to persuade them that there's nothing Fantastic. here so to even the see. The goblin does say, he doesn't speak, he doesn't say it in common, but he says trash indeed, indicating that he understood you, but he doesn't respond. So. Yeah. Um, 
Kay would have, um, as we drug the bodies off into the alley, would have quickly checked to see if there's any coins on them. Yeah. Um, he would have collected up those coins and them to mint. Okay. So, I'll need you. Do you try to? Do you try to hide this search anyway? No, not at all. So, as you start searching, the goblin and Tantul would both say, Stop! And they would explain to you that in matters such as this, in mutual combat, any funds recovered off the bodies do become property of the state. Mm -hmm. What if the state and doesn't I, find I, I, anything? I, I, the... <laughs> I would... Goblin, so Tom Tool would say that Kay was assuredly simply removing the gold off of them to give to you. He would not steal from the dead. Yes, I, 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 I would look at the goblin and say, I was just trying to provide recompense to those they had insulted and look at Mim. So Min, for her part, is now standing surprisingly tall. She is managed to she's managed to maintain her composure pretty thoroughly throughout this whole situation um so the goblin would look towards you and say in in goblin of course but he would he would imply he would ask and sort of imply at the same time that min was a captive of theirs and then he would look back toward them and basically spit out the word slavers in goblin Make a persuasion check, Kay. So, the goblin riding this panther would look around, look back towards men, look towards all of you, and he would say, No gold found on them. I would say, So it seems. And and men a pouch. Roll a d10 for each bugbear. Um, while that's while they were being drug off, can we look them over and see if there's any identifying marks, tattoos, anything that would give a us horn. an indication? I mean, the horns, yes, but yeah, I mean, anything else? Goal, that's that's okay. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Nothing stands out, but you are you are you are aware that they are Margul based on what you know so far, but nothing no additional information. So uh, I'm going to roll a stealth. Unfortunately I'm in Guardian, so this is gonna be a disadvantage. So this is probably gonna go ter terribly. What are you trying to do? Um okay. So um Dimitri is going to go over to the bodies. He is going to pull out a little card and using the um, uh, magical tinkering um, uh, doing this is going to make an image on the card of the uh, of his dragon mark and leave that on one of the bodies. just declared war we got red hood on our hands let's go <laughs> so that's why i rolled uh even with disadvantage i got a 16 so unless someone was actively like watching what dimitri was doing i'm not I hope sure that that would have stopped selfie. you even if he noticed i would be worried about it but i wouldn't have stopped you <laughs> um tinge looks at uh Tantul and just goes the bodies what are, are what are they going to do with them um so it is the goblin on panther back that responds to you when you ask that and he says that the cleanup crew will be by within the hour so then they can sit in their own thing. Tend to respond to him in Goblin, as you say. And 
I guess, head off with the group towards the caravan. Yeah. Yep. We accept the word of the word bearer. Okay. At least we haven't had to deal with any Ketcharat. don't have that on my language guide. What is that? Sure. The blade bearers. The guys are going to have the cool stuff the we want. The guys who back up. <laughs> the word bearer says, this is the word. The blade bearer <laughs> says, and yeah, he said so. Dimitri, I just want to be clear, you left an image of your dragon mark on the bugbear's bodies. Yes. Fantastic. On, on one of their bodies, yep, yep, absolutely. And if I had been smarter about it, I would have actually just done like an audible thingy that would play a sound, but that's okay, <laughs> I didn't do that. Please leave a message after the beep. Because <laughs> <laughs> I could do that, a static visual image, uh, or no, uh... It continuously emits your choice of an odor or uh, no air is it. There's somewhere I can make it do a um, recording. One of these. Okay. Anyway, it's just uh, an image that's, that's of it. Perfectly, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. I figure it will carry the message that I'm intending to communicate. Oh, well, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, use that, I use that to give the wrong woman a flower that would forever bloom. Got me into all kinds of trouble in Avernus. <laughs> 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 whenever, yes. whenever tapped by a creature, the object emits a recorded message that can be heard up to ten feet away. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the one. Yep. But I didn't do that. But I didn't do that. Nice. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Oh, um, there was something I was trying to do before. I couldn't really get it in. Okay. Uh, when we were passing that goblin who had the, who was like talking about religion or something area. yeah uh did he have like a hat or anything on <laughs> hmm. or like nearby i don't know Checking a hat well, well he did he had a sack a uh, sack of coins in front of it oh okay uh um, old goblin man empty sack open in front of him hmm yeah red would toss uh a copper piece in and then tap and then pat him on the head and say entertainment and give him a thumbs up <laughs> in goblin in goblin uh it's... okay yeah all right so after you after you patted him on the head we'll say we'll say you do this as we head back through the square as tattoo leads back but still still ranting and raving like a madman after you pat him on the head you would pause for a second and then launch fully emotioned and just launch fully into this rant about how the demons will fall from the sky and club them atop their heads. He, basically, it all is themed about giant beings clubbing them over the head. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, jeez. Don't make Funny. eye contact. <laughs> Don't make eye contact. <laughs> hmm. Dimitri is oh. just trying to, you know, have small talk with Min, keeping her, you know, calm, assuming she's probably still a little shook. Yeah, she and definitely is. She's collecting herself rather, rather quickly, though. Um, yeah, she is from... Yeah, with 22 base. gold pieces in her pocket, I'm sure that helps. Uh, Tin just looking around to see who, if anyone, is paying attention to us heading back to the caravan. Towards the caravan, and from there, Johns, after Tantul relays the information, and I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you, Dimitri, are also explaining the situation, and then also for her part, tells them all what's happened, and Johns offers her a position on the caravan. Um, 
says that there is that there is in fact a compound nearby where they can commission the services of a few senders that are there of that particular house. They do operate out of the Civis. 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 But there are a couple of house Civis messengers there if she needs to send some messages to anybody. Um, but she responds that there is nobody. That anyone that she would have sent a message to was on that caravan and is unfortunately. You said that they were. They. You were outside of. Um, Dark you were in Zalargo when they attacked? Correct. So they're ranging outside of Dargoon to find slaves. They have to be stopped. This isn't completely unheard of, I wouldn't think. It is not. Yeah. Which is part of why Delesh wants to control them. They are a thorn in his side. <laughs> Making things difficult for his neighbors, for his new neighbors. Making it look like he can't control his territory. Okay, well, um, I don't think we have anything else per se to do today There's other than not. rest. Then we will yeah. roll, basically. You all have the evening here in Lucan Draw. Um, Tantul and Johns do highly recommend not traveling too far out after dark. As no, some of the not more, going anywhere. As, you know, as it gets darker, people's blood gets more um, diluted with drink. It does get to be more dangerous even for even just among the common folk of Lucan Draw. Tenge would look at Tantul and go, Do you really think we're common? He says no, but he says that he would hate to see a repeat of the display you just saw on somebody that has that has done nothing wrong other than get a little bit of Start running his mouth at the wrong people. He says it's more to protect the other people than you all. Yeah, it wouldn't but... wouldn't hurt just some drunk person. Yeah, but some warlord's son gets a few too many um, ales in him and decides he's going to beat up on the foreigners and Yuji cuts him in half <laughs> and then a quarter of the city wants to hang us from the top of the battlements. <laughs> Have you not heard the legend of John Wick? <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> It was just a miscommunication, translation error, no big deal. He'll go right back together. So <laughs> you'll grow a new torso, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Understood. So is there anything else that you would like to do before we move on to the morning when Tantul has no. to go out of the city? No. Can I do uh forgotten memories? Grab that for us. It's a D eight. That. And Dimitri will cast alarm around our whatever we end up staying in. Okay. Just in case. Got it. Yuji. And Tinge will just stand there. Yuji, you recall a childhood memory. <laughs> what might that memory be? What's something that might have happened when Chu, when Yuji was a youngest child, maybe just before they decided to join the um, the Arnath military? Maybe an event that inspired him to do so. I uh, realized I had my uh, finger on the caps lock and not my shift key to talk, so I was talking to myself there. <laughs> nice. uh, um, I think a good Karnathian memory that Yuji would have. Uh, he's from the community of Atur, A-T-A-R, and it actually has a Mabarian manifesto, and there's this big, large crimson period or pyramid 
And I think that would visually stick out because it's placed right on top of the manifest zone. And so from an early age, he would have seen this massive structure that kind of symbolizes the power of Karnath and the you know use of necromancy all in the same one. And so from an early age, you know, they're you know, bathed in this idea that you have more uses. You're, you're useful just as well alive as you are dead. And I think it would be a, almost a reminiscent memory where he thinks back and kind of fondly thinks about that and the, interest, the interesting plight that he's found himself in. Meditation. Then with that, we will go ahead and move on to the following morning. Long rest, just Long in case. Rest. Don't think I need it, but... I do, I burned all of my second level spells. <laughs> I tried and to, and no one wanted to listen power. to me. Yes, and the Pearl of Power. Yep. And I never saw anything invisible. Disappointed. I do find the irony that I, like Yuji of all people, tried preventing the combat, and then they didn't understand him, and it was still <laughs> happening. So. <laughs> Rubbing off on you. Yep. 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 Elsewhere. Elsewhere. Indeed, elsewhere. So, leaving the walls of Rukon draw behind, you all set out toward the southern half of the Seawall Mountains. Land around you is tinged red, and the taste of dust flies through the air in the light breeze. The earth around you is tilled as you leave the city with occasional goblinoid farmers working the midsummer fields. Tontul says that your map will lead you to the headwaters of the Gaul River, the river running alongside you now supplies water to the city. It says it'll take about two days to travel the roads to the Seawall Mountains, following the banks of the Gulf. On the way, Tonto begins to tell you the story of Bird's Fall. So, he begins in Goblinoid and says, Rat Shi Anam. Translate to the story continues. With Murtal, a goblinoid warlord of great skill and pride. One day, an ancient crone told him of a legendary veil which laid a trail that only the greatest of heroes could oh, sorry, a trial in which only the greatest of heroes could overcome. Seeking to prove himself worthy of his ancestors' weapons, he took off to complete the trials, and never returned. For many years afterwards, stories were told of the great Murtal, of his skill with the chain and keen tactical insight. The stories were told of his peerless Acha and unsurpassed devotion to Brut. Then many more years passed. Sorry, for those of you that don't know what the sure is, many of us, because I didn't know. Acha is personal honor and glory, while Brut is executing one's duty correctly. Yep. So Rutal being an individual of peerless Acha and unsurpassed devotion to Mut. There's many legends of him. And then many years passed, and eventually, as all stories do, the fate of Murtal faded into common legend. Then, much later, it came to be that the Dakani Empire found itself engaged in a fierce battle with their ancient enemies, the Tarnadol. Dakani needed a champion to confront the peerless warrior leading the elven war horse, war host. A young Dorkala. Let's see if I have a translation for that. I do. A dirge singer. A bard of the Ketchvalar. Ketchvalar being keepers of the word, as has been mentioned before. But, So, Mishka took it upon herself to follow the legends of Murtal, this individual that needed to stand up against this elven war host. So, Mishka, the 
young Dorkala traveled to the Vale to retrieve the lost hero of Nar. Along the way, she faced three great trials, the test of courage, the challenge of wisdom, and the trial of honor to see if she was worthy of entering the Vale to retrieve Martal. Driven by her moot, her duty to reclaim him as the champion of the Empire, Mishka pressed all of the challenges set before her and found Martal trapped in his own trial of honor. Unable to see the solution. So as Mishka questioned him with the wisdom of the Dorkala, Martal realized that only his pride and Acha, his dangerous desire for personal glory, was holding him back. Instead, he needed to follow his moot, his duty to his people. In understanding this, Murtal completed his final trial and was freed from his entrapment. The two heroes then returned to battle, and Murtal, newly humbled by his experiences in the Vale, easily defeated the Horse Lord of the Tardigal forces by playing on the Elf's own arrogance and need for personal glory. Thus, the field was won by the Dakani. Rat Shan Gat Kaldor. The story stops but never ends. Tantul would tell you all that it's important that you all understand the story of Murtal before you go searching for him. These words and the story being told mean more than the reality of the situations in the Vale. Being so close to Thelanus, a story can be more tangible than the ground beneath your feet. Are any of y'all familiar with the um, um, the Mercedes Lackey's um, novels about the 500 stories? I know Mercedes Lackey, having having worked in a so, bookstore for almost 10 years, but I can't say I've read any of her yeah. works. So she did a series of novels that were based around a... Um, the concept of a land where all the fairy tale stories were kind of like the rule of the land. They were what bound it together. And, but they would interact in really strange ways. You know, like, um, somebody would be born as be part of a story, but like the princess who was supposed to be, you know, like there'd be a story of like a princess protect, you know, you know, captured by a dragon to be captured by the prince there'd be a princess born who was actually the prince who was supposed to, you know, all kinds of weird things. So Thelanus is bound by story over and over and over again, the same story, but with variations. <laughs> that is very it's, it, there's some very similarities, very, very serious similarities there. So I'm sure at this point, some of you, if not many of you have, while you were spending time in Sharn, research into the manifestos and it was just said is very true um i have a bit of an excerpt here to help you all understand thelanus a bit more but uh, thelanus is the plane of the fey it is a place where stories hold sway um there powerful arch fey live out their grand tales in realms with the lesser fey occasionally snatching unwary mortals as players in their grand dramas rules that mortals take for granted do not apply in thelanus as narrative takes precedence over common sense. If the story dictates that you arrive precisely at the stroke of midnight, midnight will not come until you arrive. Time and space are likewise not bound by practicality, and mortals that find their way to Thelanus can find the material plane flies out ahead without them, or even find themselves stepping backward in time upon their return to Eberron. When Thelanus is coterminous with Eberron, Bay grow more populous, and you might accidentally find yourself stepping into So, a couple of days does pass. Well, I wanted to say, mm -hmm. Tantul, I am consistently amazed by your people and their lore. I, I can't... I can't think of stories from my own lands that are so transparent with sharing someone's uh, faults as well as their strengths. That's because us civilized and, and 
big air quotes, folk are duplicitous by nature. Well, I think it, we, we think that if we don't tell anyone that we have fault, that somehow they're hidden. But I, I think that the reality is that makes them more visible. Tantul would say that his people must embrace their faults because the enemy that is within yourself is oftentimes the greatest battle you'll face. And for his people, they don't hide tales of their battles, even ones they didn't lose anymore. Yeah, Dimitri is going to be very quiet for the remainder of the evening and just sort of sit by himself in thought. Each night as we travel, um, Kay in his meditations will be trying to sense the manifest zone that we are approaching. Okay. So as you do that, the first day goes and you don't really sense anything, Kay. But by the middle portion of the second day, and certainly by the second evening, are most certainly beginning to sense a pull. Is there any change or reaction from um, all of a sudden I can't don't have a name. Um, Vakri. Not yet. Okay. Continue. So. Tantul tells you all that you are approaching the Vale. And he says that normally he wouldn't approach at night, but something tells him that dawn is going to come surprisingly early today. And he says that he begins to tell you a little bit about the veil. He does confirm for you all that the Vale is a Thelanian Manifest Zone. He says it's not somewhere you'd normally want to visit, because it does tend to have a bit of a mischievous nature to itself, the Veil in general. And when he's talking about this, he's using very specific language. Whenever he uses, whenever he talks about the Vale, he uses, um, he uses titles that make it seem um, like he's talking about a person, a living entity, a thing, and not a place, like a, like a living thing and not a place or an object, giving personality to the veil itself. Wait, we would talk about the Bermuda Triangle. Exactly. Excellent example. <laughs> okay. So, night begins to fall. But, as you all come over a rise, a perfect entrance to a valley steep angled walls of the mountain kind of coming down into a narrow pathway perfect a perfect walkway picturesque right out of a book Tantul stops the care stops the wagon hops off and says this is where he waits for you all and as he says that dawn begins to break over the mountain hmm. picturesque one would say like it's almost. Tale. Yeah. I'm. Uh, Kay is actually confused that we're approaching from the east and Don just poke over Close the top of the mountain. Don Tool would warn you not to try to make too much sense out of anything you see for the next day or two. <laughs> My brain is broken. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. We head east into the mountains. <laughs> east into the mountains. East towards dawn. <laughs> all right. So well, Tantul tells you all that the valley. Well, you all can see this. The valley is the veil is in a deep valley. The trail ahead of you just sloping down and down into the mountains. Um, mist and faint sunlight cloak the floor. you guys want to do anything before you head in? Um, 
take a big swig from my um, flask. Um. <laughs> I have my uh, what is it called? My pole of collapsing. I uncollapse it and start blind manning through the mist on the ground. <laughs> nice. But is 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 the mist that thick? Um, it's about knee high. Okay, so we can't see the ground when we're walking through it. Right. Is what you're saying? There's a low line okay. everywhere. Yeah. Follow Binge. five feet behind Red. <laughs> Change is gonna send his echo as a in front of everybody. Not that it'll tell us anything other than it'll be in front of us. Yeah. Gravity didn't really affect it. <laughs> right. If if only if it set off pitfall traps. <laughs> There's a lot of discussion on the internet on whether or not it would set off like tripwire traps or not. Some say yes, some say no. Both are very vocal. Okay, so, what little light filters down here from the unnatural dawn that has just broken? These strange and evocative shapes. Sometimes this vapor kind of rises up. Just the impression of images and shapes forming in the mist before falling back down into the vapor that comes to the ground. It was if you truly stepped into a perfect tank. Every step leads you closer, more farther, and it you see. As you all make your way into the veil, who's has, who has the map? Um, I think Dimitri does. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I sure hope so, because I forgot yeah. about a map. <laughs> yes, I have the map. Okay. Like, that's right, I have the cartographer's tools. So I'm trained in that. I'm the map guy. And I can memorize everything. That way's north. Every, Dimitri, like. as you say that way's north, you look up mm -hmm. and see... It looks like a sun, the sun directly in front of you. Yeah. Your sense of um, is suddenly behind you now. Uh. Huh. No boy, no. I, um, this is going yeah. to be follow uncomfortable. The, adjust the map, follow the path. The map make the, yeah. is now blank with a single line on it. That's across the center. Almost like an arrow. Do we have a clear path to follow? There is only one path. Uh, well, I have a clear memory of what the map looked like beforehand. I'm gonna try and follow that. Fantastic. I need you to make a charisma survival check. Charisma survival? Charisma awesome. Survival. Well, luckily, that, that doesn't change my die roll at all. 14. Fantastic. Every 50 or 60 feet that we walk along this path, I drop a ball bearing. Fantastic. 20 minutes later, you Because it's ball appropriate. Ball. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes later, still heading straight as, as you were heading, you step on something that feels a lot like a ball bearing. Of course I do. It, it seemed like leaving breadcrumbs was like appropriate for a Thelana's story. <laughs> and finding your own breadcrumbs probably feels just as appropriate. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, well, we, we have to think back to what he said. He said that uh, Myrtle um, went into we have... a veil seeking his um, moot? Uh, well, following his, yeah, to to accomplish his moot to um, claim the, you know, to complete the trial that was foretold. So the... only the greatest could overcome the trial. 
what was the first trial? Um, the first trial was uh, uh, three trials: courage, wisdom, and honor. Correct. He made it through the courage one and got trapped in wisdom. So, follow the line. Order, then he got trapped in honor. Oh, in honor. Okay, sorry. I was thinking he didn't have the what the wisdom to. Um, greed prevented him, which is considered dishonorable. Okay. Yep. His pride, he was too focused on his own pride rather than his duty. So, uh, we need to find something to challenge our courage. You hear a harsh female voice call out from about 30 feet. Sad Chatur! Mind you, there's an armored female hobgoblin about 30 feet away. She's wearing dark leathers with a crimson cloak. She has a sheathed rapier at her side. Three more armored hobgoblins stand guard behind her, longbows on their backs, shields held ready, and hands nervously on their hips. What does Shahator mean? It can mean three different things. It could mean foreigner. It could mean non-goblinoid. It could mean defiler. And it could be a derogatory version of any three of those. Why don't you go ahead and make an insight check to find out what she is? But her she she's a seeker. Remember, if we don't start none, there won't be none. Fantastic. Okay, you do in fact acknowledge that fact. She does not seem hostile. More curious than anything else. In the goblin, I will say we seek more tool. Kind of and you? Towards you? She nods and says that she seeks the same. So as she approaches, she comes down and says, Why do you? She asks, Why you seek for talk? Unfortunately, most likely, for lesser reasons than you. She does acknowledge that, and in Goblinoid, she says that she admires her honesty. She would have expected, she uses the words again, she would have expected a Chatur to convince her they had noble reasons, but acknowledge that you you that to acknowledge that you understand that you would likely find her reasons more noble than yours is commendable but we have pledged upon our honor to find more tool and retrieve the chains and thus we shall do You can tell you can tell from your 16 insight earlier that she is genuinely curious about what you all are doing here. She's trying to figure out what you know about what you're going into. She's trying to gauge if you know something she doesn't. Dimitri will pipe up. I'm... We know that we know that the trials are designed to challenge our courage, our wisdom, and our honor. We know that the great hero who wielded the chains before himself founded a challenge um, to overcome, but uh, through 
wisdom shared by um, those who carry the word, uh, he succeeded. And we hope that the words that have brought us this far will guide us through. So a hint of a smile crosses her face when you say that, Dimitri. She says in Goblin to you that you know more of this tale than many of her than many of her compatriots and many people that she's encountered. She finds this impressive. And so she says that well first off, she would finally give you her name. She says that her name is not wrong. on to say she goes on to say that she is very glad to see that other seekers are here seeking for the right reasons and knowing the right things and she says that she is very familiar with this town says that Myrtle was known throughout the entire breadth of the empire for his personal the tale that most of them are told is that he was famously unshakable in his honor and his pride. And for most people, this discourse is a great history. Not many know or acknowledge his shortcomings as we have. Whereas you all know him to have. Well, it, it is through the um, honesty of uh, on tool that we learned this. I, I was surprised from our lands. Um, stories of heroes often uh, make it out like they're they were born perfect and lived the perfect lives and then settled into the sunset perfectly. But I could speak from experience that those of us who try the hardest to do the right things often fail more often than we succeed. It's just a matter of degree. Okay. Alright, everybody. I don't think we need any checks for this. I think that you all have sufficiently <laughs> shown her what your intentions are, and that they are noble. So, she informs you all. She says that Paul learned the true meaning of blue during his time in the veil. She knows that you all do as well. She says that when in the veil, it's important to know that acting in accordance with the narrative of the lots is always the best idea. She goes on to say that the lotus plays in its own narrative. She kind of hints to you all that sometimes the course of action that makes the best story may be better than the wise course. Oh, I took an elective in uh, my um, artificer school for improv. This is, we call this <laughs> yes and. Exactly. <laughs> so she wishes you all luck says that if it is meant to be that you all reach the chains before she and her compatriots, then so be it. She wishes you all safe travels. And you as well. And let me guess, there's a new trail that she can follow. There is, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I stopped dropping ball bearings. <laughs> we just follow our trail. UG pipes up. Man, that was intense. What'd she say? <laughs> <laughs> really had the hots no. for you. She, she she just didn't know how. Yeah, yeah. UG just she rolls his eyes. He just walks away immediately. <laughs> I, I think that went well. She she wished us well, and informed us that the most important thing in this land of stories is to um i think weave yourself in instead of trying to change it to meet you but i think that we're going to find that there's probably a fine line between the two 
I don't know if I deal well enough in abstracts for this to work for me, but yes and. Yeah. I have grown up dealing in nothing but abstracts, so this doesn't seem too unfamiliar. There's many colors out there beyond black and white, but that's all that there was growing up right and wrong and their and my parents definition of right and wrong was really not good sometimes I'm, i question whether mine is exactly good but i have i have no doubt dimitri that yours is good not always well thought but good <laughs> well thank you um, I, you, as a, again, I, you'll notice that my armor is now back to my sort of infiltrator instead of the thuggy guardian one. I feel much more comfortable in it. Let's find out what story lies in front of us. Yep. We have a story to find. I'm gonna guidance myself this time because I'm a big dummy and I didn't do it before. <laughs> Ooh. Woo! I totally use my session. <laughs> I was gonna say, does somebody else want to help? Because I already <laughs> used mine. I got it. I got my session. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's real good. <laughs> Don't want to get lost in this place. <laughs> We're going to be, like, waiting for the next little generation of bards coming to say, like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? Like, I don't know. Fantastic. It's going to be another campaign where I say, he can have my sessional more than I say I used my sessional. I keep on building characters that don't need it. <laughs> okay. So, it's hard to tell how much time has passed. It could be a couple hours. You may have left... Tantul back at his camp a few minutes ago. It's really hard to tell. I know exactly how many hours. How many? No, that's fine. I don't know. <laughs> e mind. I'm, I'm really. Oh yeah, he would. He would know how many hours have passed. Yeah, but does he? Right. <laughs> the, the number of hours I think passed doesn't seem to jive up with how the sun is moving. <laughs> that is very accurate. Or how, or, or how hungry Red is. <laughs> I didn't realize how much key mind messes with the whole fate world and everything. This is hilarious. <laughs> that way, no, wait, that way, no. no. <laughs> right. All of these are north. How can they all, all be north? north. <laughs> Dimitri, I, I think they're all point, north. I think it's some they're point none north. Just, like, lose north entirely. <laughs> Like you would have yeah. no perception of it at all. It would just be gone. Yep. Yep. This is this is just so like metaphor for what's happening with him right now. Like tea, having tea and no tea. I'm gonna go ahead and say I did that on purpose. <laughs> 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 all right. So as you make your way through the valley, everybody, it is entrancingly beautiful, despite the strange shadows that after a little while started to whisper to you exactly what they're saying. They're all seems to be deeply personal. Each of you hearing different things coming from the mists. But after who knows how long of wandering through these entrancingly beautiful hills and valleys, you do finally see what you see. Dimitri, as you look at your map, the arrow on it seems to curve ever so slightly every time you look back at it until there is no more arrow, but instead what looks like a drawing of a cave mouth. And I think you know, we're here. There is the entrance to a cavern in front of you. Looks a lot like what's drawn on your map. Oh, I... I think we have found 
not our destination, but our beginning. Above I... this cavern are words carved in archaic goblin. As each of you look at them, the letters begin to shift to a more familiar language. Each of you reads, in your own native tongue, courage, action, caution, boldness. I think we have that covered. Courage, action, boldness. Yeah, I think, okay. yeah, <laughs> that kind of describes our group. Um, Caution left out. <laughs> well, yeah, sorry. Thoughtful. I don't know, I'm fairly delicate. cautious. All right. But, um, is there any obvious reasons why we can't just walk right in? What else is around us? Um, it in the side of the valley. As I try to be cautious. <laughs> hey, you're noticing nothing. <laughs> yep. That's a rock. Tinge. It's a rock, it's it's a rock it here. <laughs> <laughs> does, does anyone have reservations before we go in? So many. But in we go. <laughs> Nope. Well, Don't got anything better to do. Just start walking on in. Well, I, I As the great philosopher good. Anthony Bourdain said, no reservations. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to know that, that doing, doing the right thing in spite of your reservations, that's what courage is. Dimitri will take a deep breath, steal his shoulders, slam down that face mask, and start walking forward. As you enter, making your way around large boulders and stalagmites, it doesn't take long before you find yourselves in a large chamber. The ground ends in front of you, a cliff plummeting far below, the depths shrouded in a magical darkness that your eyes cannot penetrate. Mm. The top of the cavern is lit by a bright mystical light from unseen force, almost as if the sun was shining directly above you all through the cavern, shining right down in the center of this, this large area. There is a natural bridge that leads across the abyss to a platform in the middle of the cavern. The bridge, however, is clearly unsafe. The first <laughs> half is covered with vicious spikes that raise and lower intermittently, violently from the ground. For a few feet after the spikes, there is a brief haven of safety, and then several huge, dangerous pendulum axes swoop back and forth across the bridge. And we are going to call it a session right here. Yeah. I, I picture, like, Galaxy Quest. Who built? Who built 